Good evening. Welcome at Connection School Talk. My name is Urs Thoman. I'm here together today with uh, Rudolf Graf for today's talk, Spaces, where do they begin, where do they end? Spaces is the name of a new educational program at Connection School dedicated to the spatial planning for Ukrainian rural communities. In a series of workshops, the program investigates a cluster of six communities in Western Ukraine together with representatives of these communities and young professionals from all over Ukraine. With the educational principles of Connection School, such as interdisciplinary approach, teamwork and experiential project-based learning, working together on place is an important framework condition for providing our program. We are optimistic that the situation with COVID-19 will allow us to do this in September for the first workshop of the program in our communities. Until then, the online format with a series of introductory lectures will allow allows us to introduce ourselves and our participants to the topic and the work of the SPACES program. And at the same time, to bring and the topic of the course to a wider audience of Connections Talk. Today's lecture, therefore, will be held in English, but the working language for the learning program is Ukrainian. And this is also the reason why we will, you will see later our slate, slides in Ukrainian language. Today's lecture is an introduction into the common understanding of Rudolf, who is together with me, mentor of the program. Um, um, for the SPACES program, both as a program as the objects of investigation basis. In next lectures, other members of Connection School Talk will follow up with applications tool that, which we will um, use in the program. Namely, you will hear on next uh, Thursday a election by uh, our colleague Sasha Sheglov and Vadim Denisenko with the name All About SPACES, GIS and Mobility Planning in communities among the Ukrainian Gramadas. And in two weeks, on July 30, um, Maria Grishenko um, will hold a lecture all about spaces to plan um, amalgamated communities with the involvement of people. So, um, spaces. Here in my... Spaces. So what is spaces for connection? Spaces is on the one hand is an abbreviation for the key issues during the program. Spatial planning, yes, planning instruments for accessibility, cooperation and economic sustainability. More than this, under more than these preconditions for us, it basis is also the definition of a territory. One could say a region. Spaces are, in our case, one of the uh, most important characteristics. Spaces, spaces, spaces are areas of the Earth's surface which share unifying characteristics. In our case, one of the most important these characteristics is the will of the participating communities for cooperation and the issues mentioned before accessibility, cooperation, and economic sustainability. Nevertheless, um, there are different, um, could be definitions for spatials or regions. So for these characters, uh, how to find these um, characteristics. Um, one of the way to do this, um, we can talk in theory um, about different types, three different types of how to define uh, spaces or, or um, region. Uh, one way is the perceptual way, perceptual spaces. Such spaces, they are based on opinions. Usually they don't have clear boundaries. Um, often they are dealing with feelings and emotions, traditions. So you see in this, uh, in this slide on the left hand, you see a map of Switzerland um, with icons of um, traditions which are lived in different regions and which are connected together. So 
um, yeah, and and these um, uh, such uh, through such traditions, um, um, spaces, regions are um, understood in a perceptual way. Um, another way to define spaces could be a formal way or an administ administrative way. Um, such spaces they are based on facts. Um, data for such spaces could be collected. Um, often, yes, one of the classic ways are the administrative borders who define these spaces, but also uh, landscapes can be um, can can be um, kind of formal spaces when you take, for example, climatic zones also, um, which can be collected if collected the data can be defined. And the third way, which is very popular now in regional planning, Maybe the most in, in mo, mo, the, mo, the most uh, most important, which is applied in regional planning, are functional spaces, um, which spaces which are based on functions. We have a clear use of it. Um, usually, such spaces have a clear center or maybe several subcenters and some kind of infrastructure which uh, connects the rest of the area um, with these centers, but also between each other. Our spaces, as we understand it, them in our program, they are not part, not one of these clearly types. So um, all these three definitions somehow um, could be true, somehow are applied on our, in our case, which we work for. And um, so kind of a rather kind of a combination of such, um, such definition. But uh, one important, preconditions for our space which we work for is that it is defined by the will of the people of the participants to work together the will to make a project together for cooperation um, this says us that um, the social sphere social spaces are um, very important um factors how regions or spaces are defined are created and designed so cooperation as uh, basic conditions to create and to 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 to, to design spaces um, but what is to to enable such cooperations what is needed we have first to know what we need we have to know what we have this is um, one precondition, and if you talk about cooperation and to and to um, define spaces in a in a bigger area, we also need to know what the other has, and we need to know what the other needs um, um, to make it happen that we can create our spaces together. But what is the common space of these needs of? and haves. Usually it is not so clearly defined, probably as um, we saw in the slide before, when it's about uh, building a house together in a community of people where everyone knows each other, where everyone helps each other. Um, in the uh, nowadays world, the area of these spaces um, is maybe a bit blurry, very dense, but to what does it apply? And um, again, um, what are the borders of such spaces? So what is the common space of the needs and have? So for us, the um, answer to this question was so while we were discussing also this presentation and the program for this year, landscapes. Um, we think landscapes are the place or the entity where we can best see uh, what we have together, um, the richness uh, that we share. Um, literally, we can see inside of landscapes our communication, the roads, the road network, the infrastructure network, uh, the places we meet, like the settlements, the villages, the towns. Um, but we also can see inside landscapes the dangers we face together in the future or the risks we might face in the future. And that's especially important today uh, when we speak a lot about um, climate change. And uh, when we look at this future menace um, with the eye of the urban planner or with the eye of the architect, um, we miss 
we miss the signs that uh, landscape or the scale of landscape can um, um, can give us and can show us. So landscapes are in any case um, structured. Um, they, um, Urs, I think you should, um, I think only you can do it now to move or can I do it here? Uh, landscapes are structured. They, um, they basically form um, big coherent mega structures of space, which are uh, substituted into smaller areas, which you can hardly define as, as uh, Urs mentioned before already. Uh, but they are structured by natural elements, as we know, by rivers, by topography, by lakes, by forest bodies. They're also structured by infrastructure elements and by man-made elements, yeah? by big highways, by uh, train infrastructure, uh, by big agricultural infrastructure in the end, because agriculture is anything else than natural nowadays. It's in itself uh, 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 a man-made surface, a new surface. And um, of course, in reality, a landscape is structured by all of this together. And um, for example, Holland uh, is an extreme example of a man-made natural landscape or a, um, a, a, a artificial landscape, if you, if you want to say so. Uh, more than 20% of the country, of the land mass of the country was gained in the last 100 years by a technique called polding, which means to build huge dikes around segments of the sea and to drain the water and to gain the, the, the land as an agricultural surface later on. And this resulted into amazing landscapes we all know today, um, uh, which seem to be natural, but are not by any means. And um, these aerial photos we, sh we, we have um, show us how intricate the relation of man-made spaces uh, and uh, nature is yeah so, so so today we all know these images from 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 holland where we can see this this amazing uh, uh, spaces that uh, contain everything um we know also from a natural area like also woods and also agricultural sites and water bodies and forest bodies and villages and settlements and so on but they're entirely planned and this created in holland for example an amazing or a or a very let's say a very well tuned um gaze and uh, uh, eyesight uh, for the scale and for the scale of landscape it's something um in general at least uh, as far as uh, i'm concerned for example um architecture education or urban planning education doesn't give you in in the rest of europe that much um so this right view on landscape is something you have to plan and you have to interact with and this uh, understanding of natural elements as something that you need to work with together and not against um, 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 is, is a quite unique thing and it's something we also will pursue during this uh, this connections uh, um, uh, program of course uh, there is a lot of man-made disaster because of this and um, also the holland uh, example uh, 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 or, or holland uh, planners in holland learned a lot about uh, uh, about how to deal with nature uh, uh, in this image, you have um, a picture from Rosha Montana. It's in the Carpathians in Romania, where a big part of landscape was changed and remodeled and rebuilt in order to easily access local resources. In that case, uh, gold, which was find, found there in the mountain. So entire villages were basically destroyed, as you can see. What you see here is a river full of cyanide, of, 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 uh, of poison, actually, used to wash uh, uh, gold out of the ground. So we see here that decisions taken in, uh, in um, uh, decisions that affect landscapes can affect huge swaths of landscape and a huge, huge amount of money uh, of, of a huge uh, amount of people. And what you see here is, of course, an extreme case. It's an extreme case also of uh, a very centralized decision making. For example, this village in Transylvania was destroyed uh, around 60, uh, 50 or 60 years ago, as, as far as I know. Um, and here we come to talk about types of decision-making when we speak about planning in general. 
And when it affects landscapes or the dimension of landscape, um, the scale of landscape, it's especially dramatic because we have on the one side centralized decision making. Uh, as we all know it from the Eastern Bloc, everybody who lived in Eastern Europe knows it. Um, the Soviet Union and also Romania, when I'm from, had extreme forms of uh, centralized uh, planning and top-down decision making. And on the left side here, we see it exemplified by uh, Mr. Ceausescu, um, taking some decisions on his own about uh, urbanizing the entire rural area of the country. It was one of the, uh, one of the main uh, party strategies in the, in the 70s to the 80s to transform every, every village in a small town. And it was based on an idea that came initially from uh, Khrushchev from 1951 um, with the idea of so-called um, agrotowns. And yeah, so we speak about an extreme form of uh, intervention into landscape and into, into landscapes, let's say so, uh, and, and to the lives of people uh, based on centralized decision making. Um, on the other side, we can make the same mistakes without the problem in very decentralized systems. After 1989, the tendency to take decisions on individual level, yeah, uh, based on property rights, uh, was very strong in, in Romania. I know it's very strong in, in, in Ukraine too. Uh, and what we see here, for example, is a development in an in-between space between city and uh, rural area. Yeah? So uh, a place that was pure landscape before of that, even if agricultural mostly. Uh, and where the urban development pursuit allowed everybody to build at any time on its, his parcel in this, in this area. And the result is this. And as you see, it's a very inefficient way to, to use land resources. It generates a huge amount of uh, traffic and of infrastructure needs. Um, uh, it's classic sprawl in the end, what we know for a long time already in urban planning and in uh, planning in general, that it's not a good thing to do. But uh, this can happen with decentralized or, or extremely decentralized decision making too. So I think, um, it's important to, to, to find a way in between, and, and there are ways to do this, to avoid um, something like in the next slide, um, which I like caricatured a bit, um, the way we deal today with, uh, with development in the territory and um, our need to drive cars, to use individual uh, car traffic and so on, um, expands the, the, especially the car infrastructure enormously, not only inside the cities, but also in the territory around the cities on regional and on national level. And everywhere in Europe and for example, Germany, because of this development that uses around 100 hectares of land per day only to new infrastructure uh, in between cities, um, even set a national goal to reduce this amount of hectare per day in 2030. So we see that um, even if we are, we are mostly as architects and urban planners, we are aware of the, 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 the surface uh, individual traffic and car uses inside cities. Um, but we should be aware also that all this infrastructure, this, uh, this uh, highways we build and so on, they are equally taking away land around the cities and they also segment landscape very strongly. And it's what I try also to show in this picture, this, this, this uh, green patches are isolated from each other, which is a disaster from a, a point of view of um, uh, uh, mammifers, animals, uh, biodiversity, and so on. Um, but there are better ways to do this. Um, we know this in general from for a very long time already. Um, it is important for, for decision makers, for planners to look to landscape in an, uh, let's say, multi-scalar way. It's important to see all the layers that form landscape, not only the property layer, for example, like parcels, what we generally do, and maybe the zoning, which we are next uh, used to do, yeah, like the functional zoning of an area or a city, but to understand the topography, to look at the wetlands and the flora of an area, to understand uh, the climate change in between, yeah, and what expect us, expects us in an area for, for the future. Um, so to have a really integrated and uh, interdisciplinary view over landscape and also to find, and I repeat myself, it's something we will want to do during this program, to find the right scale and the right view and the right mindset to look 
at these things because we generally tend to look at them very zoomed in at the personal level or at the city level as architects and urban planners. Regional planners look at it from very far outside yeah, and it's generally a very top view perspective they have. Uh, if you work on the level of an oblast, for example, yeah, which is after zoning plan, it's the next hierarchical uh, planning uh, level, um, you will not see much of a landscape. You will see some structures, pretty abstract maybe. You won't understand, for example, the landscapes uh, that were shown in the beginning, like the ones defined by identities, by uh, traditions and things like this, or you will see them in an abstract way. So finding the right scale and the right framework to look at these things is something we work on and we think is important. There are even some guidelines for this. We just, um, uh, just 2013, um, the Convention on Biological Diversity um, of, the, of the United Nations defined some, uh, some basic principles to approach landscape. They're not unknown probably to most of you. Um, I will just pick out, um, I will just pick out some of them shortly, uh, not all of them, because you can read about them anyway. But I think what's important is that when we look at, and when we define a, a landscape area or landscape space, let's say, yeah, to understand what are our common concerns in that, in that place, yeah, what's, what's the common entry point, we start this development or this discussion. It's very important to be able to look at this space as uh, from different levels, yeah, on multiple scales. I, I, this is one of the main challenges. Uh, very often you tend also as a decision maker, but also as a planner and also as a citizen, you tend to look very deep into a scale, very focused into something and not be able to, to, to zoom out uh, or vice versa, to zoom too much out and not to look into details. So the switching between these scales is a very important uh, exercise. Um, and of course, um, the clarification of rights and responsibilities, I want to address them because they're on these principles. It's important to, to address it, it's true. And uh, a lot of them are in the legal framework, very clearly separated, especially when we talk about landscapes on national and on local level. Yeah? Uh, very, in most European states and Ukraine too, forest is a, 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 a topic that is treated on national level. And it's, there are good reasons for it to be uh, like this. Forests are very often state owned, yeah, like roads. So it's, it, there are reasons for it, but it's important also to share responsibility for all these things. It's important, even if the responsibilities are split, still to have a common understanding of these things. And also in essential point to be able to share responsibilities for, for, um, for a common yeah, um, goods or what we have. And how this can be done um, and what are possible approaches to bring these things together like in practice is something um, Urs will immediately um, address with you on the example of um, Limatal in Switzerland. No, I was wrong, not Limatal, Langenthal, am I right? <laughs> Urs. Yes, um, yes, Limmatal, Limmatal will also come at, the, at, at a later point. And now I start um, on the example of Langenthal, which is a small town in the middle of Switzerland, but in an area which is not so dense settled, right uh, where, the, where the hills, They're on the one side, the Alps, on the other hand, uh, the Jura um, mountains, begin um, and uh, on uh, this case of, of this project which we elaborated in our office um, I will will um, try to show you the approach um, how um, nowadays in a highly specialized world in a highly bureaucratic world also in Switzerland um, common way, ways could be defined to, yeah, to, to bring different communities together um, and to develop um, new ways and elements um, to shape their common landscape, their common uh, the, the places um, together. Um, yes, as we already earlier stated during our in our presentation, um, presentation so um, the entry points of spaces are defined by 
physical and human characteristics. Um, if we, from the perspective, yeah, um, with, uh, zoom out in a larger in this larger scale, we see um, as the defining um, physical elements um, topography as a very um, important important point um, with um, the different um, kinds of green spaces, forests and agricultural areas and so on, green areas um, in it. Um, we have the water bodies as a very defining um, uh, at some places, uh, some regions in the world, even the one defining defining ele elements for the spaces. And yeah, so we, these are mainly the, the, the key such um, prestigious, um, physical and um, yeah, given by given by by, by nature uh, elements. For it. On the other hand, um, we have um, such clear human-made um, characteristics as the yes the street network made by you in these areas. Um, we have different kinds of infrastructures. We also have hierarchy in these infrastructures, which shapes the space, and we have settlements typologies also um, shown on the slide um, on this slide in the middle of the, the right so um, historically in areas um, we have um, settlements which were built along streets we have settlements which were bu built along a core even only um, yes so these um, these these char characteristics of, of different se settlements they they um, uh, define space space his historically and today but the um, one element um, um, which is maybe key then where people live is how to reach all economic regional econo economy work. So uh, the cultural la landscape is shaped by economic co corporations, which are in, 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 in the area on, the, on different ways. So that's the one key, key issue. Um, for doing a project together, um, yes, um, who participates? Um, if we look at the space, at the landscape, um, we probably we know that there are some borders in it, some administrative borders. Sometimes we recognize them. It's really easy sometimes even to re recognize them. But very often also, especially in, in, in the red at least barely settled area, um, these borders are not really visible and it's important um, for the for the development of the of, of this la landscapes for taking care of this landscapes and um, that we um, find ways to think um, um, not inside the borders of one municipality um, but to understand the common the common space the common the common resource also where, where, where we live together so um, borders are part of the landscape but they can be overcome by al alliance of willing so here in this uh, case of, of Langenthal you see the the main town in the middle of this re region in the heart of this region and you see a green area which is um, kind of a administrative um, border kind of a county who usually um, works to, together and you see a red area which was um, like probably in our case of the spaces program at connections of um, a bunch of, of um, um, communities which decided to elaborate these projects together um, which uh, for the development yeah, in the heart of it. You see that on the one hand, not all of the administrative entity took part. On the other one, like the, the, the white one, other stakeholders there, there also particip participate, participates and took part in this project. Um, but what is this project about? When, what in the end forms spaces um, of area? Um, one important factor are national national policies. 
Um, to see on the left hand uh, map of Switzerland with green areas, which are the defined by yeah functional. So these are functional spaces mainly, so-called urban agglomerations of Switzerland, which are defined by statistical criteria, maybe as the main yeah, areas of growth in Switzerland with special national policies and, and progr programs for their development, which are strongly um, um, focused on infrastructure to uh, on sustainable mobility inside this area. So focused, let's say, more on the built environment in this area. Um, you see in this um, uh, le hand on the le on the left hand in this map also Langenthal as maybe the smallest dot, <laughs> the smallest of this by statistically functional elaboration. And the reason is this uh, map is um, from the ten years ago. Um, recently, um, Langenthal is not um, is not um, anymore um, part of this agglomeration program. So it is defined as too small and um, not, um, not part anymore uh, of, of this program. On the other hand, on the right hand, you see also the map of Switzerland with different, different points, uh, colors. And here again, the, 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 the one, the purple one in the middle is again Langenthal, um, which on the other hand, got the opportunity to become part of um, 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 a, a, a new program, which is that which is focused on landscape development. So, um, with, where it is, um, yeah, in in different area. It's you see, it's um, you also have um, dots in urban urbanized area and the green ones. So also, for for example, we have programs which are focused on digitalizations. Um, but um, the one one, and this is our case, is um, focused on on development of, of land, landscape issues. And then, with knowing of this um, national program, this becomes a strong motivation, top down, by because of actually top down from the state, even um, to to bring um, communities together and um, uh, yeah, and and work on on the development on on important issues. For them. On the other hand, we have also strong motivations that come become, could become, come from bottom up. Um, all these spaces, they are also shaped by living traditions. Living traditions, which here, um, in our case, with the focus on landscapes, they coincide um, yeah, with, with top down. Uh, intuition, in, intuitions, uh, aspira aspirations. Um, this um, landscape of uh, around Langenthal is historically shaped on a very special way of uh, watering system, irrigating system, and the form of farming, um, where from time to time the fields, agriculture fields, are flo flooded by yeah artificially um, elaborated you see the a system of canal of canals which um, in the, in this way was historically kind of a, of a, of a biologic uh, for, for, for fertilizing of, of the areas and with this his history these are some of the most um, valuable um, areas on bio bio biodiversity in in, Switzer in Switzerland so this traditional way this living tradition which still is the um, way um, still still is pra practi practiced um, is also in um, more and more coincides with um, new appreciations by the community again the bottom up um, when in the nowadays world uh, with um, yeah Climate, climate change, for example, as uh, one of the uh, topics which are dis discussed on every day and everywhere. And um, with, um, uh, as Rudolf say, said, the landscapes under pressure, also in Switzerland, still settlement areas are expanding, um, where such issues like uh, biodi biodiversity, landscape, um, uh, recreation areas, uh, not far away from where you live and become new appreci appreciations uh, in, in the community. 
and give um, opportunity um, of for, for the synergies between between uh, traditional ways that we said between interests given by national uh, policies and the bottom-up interests uh, by the people who live in a space. Um, so this is the big uh, was was the the, the um, defining starting point for the development of this area around Langenthal. Um, when we um, during our work, which um, on the one hand um, was yeah studying investigating the landscape on its potentials. Um, on the other hand, also about the um, interests uh, and, and needs of the, need, the, the needs of, of, of the people which are there. Um, it um, showed that in fact there are two main structures which give the biggest potential, the main potential um, for the development of the um, quality of life and quality of um, of the common space um, in the in the next uh, in the next few words, few years. On the one hand, these were are the lines, the connecting lines between the different types of settlements. So this um, kind of um, we have in this structure historically we have these radials so the connections between the the, the, the settlements um, where we uh, the, the the logic so the, the common space uh, the people there are, are, are connected on the one on the one hand it's phys physically visible it's human made it's physically visible um, on the, on the other hand also along these connections there um, are um, big development potentials on the one hand inside the settle settlements um, for for um, yeah, built development on the other hand also in parts which are going where, the, where these connections are, are um, going through the landscapes and for um, bio biodiversity along this along these roads as usually um, yeah this the streets is due to the landscape as usually the immediately areas along streets are not so intensively used um, there um, a huge potential that these are good places and um, for for different kinds of, of 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 herbs but also also kinds of of, of, of small animals uh, uh, as, as living spaces um, while um, the the big areas in between the green areas are more or less um, clear so we, we saw so the the system the existing system of the of the of the watering of the watering system so um, there is not the big need for cooperation, so this is more or less um, working. A special attention should be given then on the development of one connecting line, which are uh, several along there. There are several community to create them um, this new um, this, this common living spaces for flora and fauna. Um, on the other hand, um, the, so it's let's say these are the lanes. The lanes where are connecting people in in the space. Eh? The, the 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 connections, the radials between the settlements. On the other hand, we have the connection between settlement and landscape, between human and nature. So all this uh, transition spaces, this kind of um, between at at the at the fringe of the of the settlement areas and um, this can be say can, can be seen as interfaces um, yeah between landscape and between human living and uh, the, the the landscape so here in this um, areas the interests uh, come together and the great potential uh, for sy for synergies for both sides uh, can be developed developed so on this slide we see um, a few examples already, partly already um, existing, partly for the future, um, how this um, new appreciation for these um, two structures um, is um, supported by with projects. So we see a new appreciation for the on the on the top left and um, for the core of the central town and uh, where one 
of, of this, or two, two of this um, uh, radial arterias start and we developed as a, as a space for pedestrians. And, and yeah, yes, it's, and uh, on the left down, on the, on the downside, it's, it's um, already not in the core town, but in, a, in, a, in a, uh, one of the villages above, but where um, on, on situation um, intersections and also with the with the trail line a note uh, for development for, yeah for for, for 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 the settlement development um, is um, identified and um, where this um, region so which which could be developed as, as a regional no node where um, important functions will be located in the next year and not in the open landscape as as uh, Rudolf showed in the in, in few examples before. On the other hand, on the right hand, you see um, you see um, images of um, developments at this um, interface between settlement and landscape. With um, on the one hand. Um, a clear definition of the settlement fringe, uh, a way where you can have a walk. On the left hand, you see uh, your village. On the right hand, you see the lights landscape, and in a way which also um, defines a boundary, um, um, which um, uh, against the further e e expansion of the settlement area. And, and on the top, on the, on the right, this is an example of a small animal park also, which brings um, yeah, animal life closer to the, to the settlement, to the settlement and um, is a way for extensive use, not for, uh, for extensive use of these green areas and not for, for highly pro producing agriculture as an ec ecological. But what is the core in the end when we come to the needs and half, to the common needs and half of a space? Um, it is also about economic develop development, about projects doing together, which um, create a value chain inside the area um, of kind of a regional spe specialities and circle e economy. Um, and here is the example again of this, of this, of this area uh, where people do the um, common understanding of the value where they, where they live, of, the, of these needs and haves um, uh, realized one kind of a case, the, um, uh, best practice project, best practice project, um, where the local, um, it, it started just as a local um, cheese diary, um, they needed um, new heating for heating the milk, for creating cheese, um, but um, they understood that um, with this they can create synergies um, doing this heat with the regional wood, with wood and not with gas, for example, even if this with wood is a bit more expensive, um, but, uh, but uh, the money will spend in, in the same area. Um, and even um, they, they, they um, also understood that if they, they don't do it only for themselves, but uh, they can, they can crea crea create a heat network um, to doing it a bit bigger and that a uh, big part of the community um, with this project can can benefit and create a value chain inside um, yeah, inside their their community, all uh, based on this um, existing needs and haves um, in the common space. So, but who is responsible for such landscapes? Who is responsible for creating our common space? How can this make be, make happen? Right. So we um, um, we looked a bit at who are the actors, who are the main actors doing planning, uh, and we know by now that politicians, like pictures on the left, which is again Mr. Ceausescu doing some great lonely decision making, uh, politicians alone can't really do it or should do it alone. Uh, they did it very often. It didn't went well. Architects and planners are the next in line. Um, they had also a lot of shots 
um, into this in the last century and more, um, it not always played out well. So they shouldn't be left alone with this uh, neither. Regional planners and um, 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 uh, national strategy planners, let's say, should be more suited, let's say, because they maybe understand a little bit better how the way ecosystems and human settlements and so on um, overlap and, and influence each other, and as well natural phenomenon. But as these pictures on the right side shows, in, in, in which was taken in ivano Frankivsk actually, uh, Oblast uh, 2020, um, this photovoltaic field um, uh, that is damaged by uh, climate change um, uh, uh, provoked catastrophe um, shows it's also maybe not such a good idea just to take decisions on only on that level. Um, and I think it's ironic, ironic enough that exactly a, a field of photovoltaic uh, panels was uh, flooded here. So we think neither of three should take these decisions um, alone, actually. And um, again, in the same way, um, uh, it is important to look at different scales um, at, at, at the landscape and at the territory. In the same way, it is important to uh, have really a diverse, um, uh, diverse interest represented and diverse knowledge from different spheres represented in the discussion and the decision making when we uh, speak about uh, planning decisions at this scale, especially. And uh, Urs will. Um, uh, present an example that goes in this direction in Limental this time. Yes, now we're coming to Limental. So basically, again, there are could be two approaches and two different approaches and um, how to bring people people together. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the three categories um, Rudolf talked, but also with the people who are the inhabitants of the citizens of open space, space. One is top down and bottom up, but also it can be a uh, project-based or, on the other hand, um, based um, more, more based on a common understanding of, of, of a region, of a, a vision for the development of the region. So that's the example I showed for, for, for Langenthal, which uh, probably um, it is not such a complex place. Um, it is quite good understandable. Even people know each other. Um, um, if you do this in a denser um, urbanized area, also an area which is growing strong, where people from all over the world, all over the country, they come here, they're doing their business or images. It's more complex to, yeah, this top-down and, and, and um, vision-based approach uh, to bring this together. And the way um, to do this project, uh, more project-based for this limit, limit is um, uh, the creating of a so-called um, regionale, project so a project show for 2025 planned um, where to, um, initiated in 2018 um, on the search for projects um, which could bring um, this um, yeah on the one hand bring people from this region together on the other hand also shape this common space in a, a desired direction. Yes, as I said, Limital is um, quite a complex uh, place, which um, is um, growing strong, which is also perceived by more people than live there, um, to, to even five, five times, um, four times more people than live there. They are just it's just a transitional space because it's on the main direction between uh, Zurich and the west of Switzerland and almost rest of Switzerland, <laughs> one, one could say. And so you have a lot of people who, uh, yeah, who only um, drive through, through this, this, this space. So um, the, how to do it via projects still, um, you said that the, the, the Rudolf mentioned the three categories. Um, still poli politicians, architects, and, and regional planners are important. Linked with, um, in this case, um, more or less these three cat categories, they are curators of this regional um, administrative bodies, um, which um, defines um, quite wide topics. So one of it again is um, landscape as one of the key topics. 
free space, open spaces and landscapes as one of the key topics for the development of, uh, yeah, in this, in this uh, common space. Uh, the other one also, which quite generally called is living together. So how do we live together in this? And the third topic, it's uh, renewal as, um, yeah, it, 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 all, all these three are, are connected together from the basic um, conditions that um, the settlement space shouldn't grow anymore or only little um, to, for converse, cons conservation of, of uh, open spaces. Yeah, with, with this uh, under the uh, under the, these three topics, um, all, everyone, uh, people can apply with their project ideas um, for the jury and the creation uh, of, of projects, um, which um, will be uh, yeah, which will be um, evaluated, and then, then the best of them will be showed on this uh, project show, the Regionale 2025, and then um, yeah, be, be defined uh, for the for implementation in the upcoming upcoming years. So this is uh, one could say this is um, yeah it's only initiated top down but then um, an approach that really we, we for bottom up um, um, yeah project de definitions which brings the people together via yeah, projects. On the other hand again uh, another example which is more similar similar uh, to the Langenthal case again it's a it's a how you could do it in a, a more clearly defined space, in a clearly defined landscape, um, the, um, to create where you can bring people together for um, to create a common vision for the or visions um, for the for the for the further development in the in the in the next year um, visions which are based on shared values on the one hand and on development ideas and potentials on the other hand. Um, um, however, at the end of this uh, pro proce process, um, th there was one common issue, which was understand as the, as the, as the key issues. Um, the result um, could be so that the one who everything agreed and um, we should work together. And for this, um, we built a common institution which um, um, continues with this process um, to shape the vision further to kind of common strategies for development together and um, to um, enable the corporations, the place where the different municipalities find them together and on a regular basis will cooperate together. So these um, are two approaches to ways um, for areas um, yeah, for spaces for spaces um, uh, how to to bring the people together and initiate them um, development um, yeah so for the concluding word I would like to ask Rudolf to bring um, in a nutshell what spaces are for us Thank you, Urs. So yeah, to, to close the loop with the beginning, um, what we deem necessary um, is, like I said already, um, to, to develop an, an, an gaze and an eye and an understanding for the, for the different scales of landscapes we will work with or we should work with. Uh, even though we don't know what are their exact borders and limits, yeah, this is always something that fluctuates. Uh, it might be between two rivers, but it might be, in, be between two dialects also. So um, it, it, it always greatly varies. Um, and we want to look at it from a perspective of um, both economic development on one hand, um, but uh, with a very, very strong awareness for the fact that economic development can damage landscapes irreparably. And uh, with an awareness also for the many, many, many instances in history when a territory was used for economic development, but the money never returned back to the people who lived there. So this is a question for sure of sustainability in the end, the way you use uh, an area and the way people who live in this area have access to the resources of the area or 
or um, or uh, the way they manage the access to the resources of the area is an important factor in, in economic development and in, in regional development. And also we will look at it from the perspective of accessibility, which is part of the uh, of the SPACES uh, acronym. Um, but we won't look at it at accessibility only from the usual perspective, like uh, uh, everybody needs 100% accessibility to everything, for sure. Um, um, from that uh, point of view, let's say uh, a pensioner needs a good accessibility to public services or a kid needs a good accessibility to education and so on. But we also will look to it from the point of view of accessibility to the resources of the landscape. Yeah? And we think uh, the resources of a landscape and especially uh, for, a, for a, a territory that is rich in forests or rich in uh, touristic opportunities uh, or in waters or in other uh, resources or in human resources, uh, it is important to gradually control access. Yeah? Not everybody should have access to everything at any time uh, and uh, not if it's coming from everywhere. So it's important if you have a forest yeah, to have a graduated access to that forest and a really um, a, good, a good way to manage the access to the resource this forest represents. So accessibility is not only a question of enabling accessibility, uh, but it's also a question of um, controlling uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, managing benefits of the, the landscape um, for the people who, who live in that area. So that will be somehow the, the main parts uh, of our journey through connections this year. And also this were, yeah, things we wanted to bring close to you through this presentation. And we hope we succeeded to some extent. I think we're into the questions now. Yes, yes, um, Rudolf. I, I, see, I see a good one. Yes, Rudolf, we have a um, uh, good question from Jegor Vlasenko. Um, what should be the first steps in the discussion of the future of spaces created through collectivization? Former collective farms and adjacent settlements created in a top-down manner, hence with no strong community history. You Can I? Show Ceausescu, yes, please. Yeah, right, right. So, <laughs> so this qualifies me <laughs> to give an answer. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, 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 I've seen this question before, and I, I, I wrote down for myself. I think because I've seen this somehow happening. Uh, Romania, when uh, after 1989, went through a very rapid ten years of debt collectivization. Um, it didn't, and it, this process continued until today, basically. And um, I think what's needed in the first case is really a very, very big and smart social psychological project because um, people who are collectivized or, and, and lived in these areas, um, as far as I understand it, and I'm by far not a specialist in this, but it's very hard to uh, make them um, accept, let's say, uh, the, the, in, in that, at that moment, the good parts of working together and uh, the good parts of uh, putting resources and pooling resources and land especially together. Um, uh, and this, 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 uh, this, this makes it very easy to lose everything that cooperation ever brought to them. Of course, we know it was a forced cooperation. We know this, and that's why it's so difficult to, to, yeah, to take the good parts or eventual good parts out of it, um, but um, uh, it 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 opens the field very broadly to 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 big investors in agriculture lands, and um, what you will see if you don't manage to to not to keep the cooperatives together because it, it's not about this, but um, uh, you need somehow to 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 keep to. to uh, to to keep the cooperation together, not the cooperatives, yeah, but to transform the cooperatives into real cooperation. And um, I know uh, Jäger asked what should be the first steps to be done with this. I I don't I don't know, but uh, uh, for sure, going just into a direct privatization option, yeah, is I don't think it's the right way. I don't think it's the right way. It it didn't show very good results in other countries i would but um that's as far as i can go about this issue maybe Urs has 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but with, uh, I think one important thing where you can start is um, we uh, had it a bit um, in the last program in the in in, in the um, Gromada program where we participate. Um, things which are nowadays um, seem for the people in these communities, which are, which is still there, they they seem like normal. So it's it's obvious for them on the one hand, um, um, but um, and and a bit um, the the threats they don't they don't see the threats. So for exa for example, the the areas uh, for uh, the, um, uh, what what's the past of what what's in what's in English where the co the collect um, the cows the collective cows they just go to the water and they, and for them it's somehow obvious that they still are so they are accessible accessible for for all of them and and seems probably that no special planning will be needed take it for granted that it will be uh, uh, will, will, will stay like this and unfortunately it's not like this and um, it's not it's not for, for granted i think um yeah as you said um the the, the forms of cooperation which still are working to somehow to 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 show the value of this living together on the other hand also the spatial elements the value um, which uh, for which are seen less yeah as for, as for granted but are not given also the the gardens the big the big the big gardens between between the buildings um, um, and so so i think i think the the the, the, the yeah, valuing the um, elements which are now they have and somehow they it looks like obvious but then um, the the future could yeah could could bring threats for them i think this would be a starting point for me. Um, I am reading a second question from Nick Karachov, uh, Gorochov. Um, except of politicians, architects and planners, what is the role of community itself in decision-making process? Do the people really responsible for the bad planning conditions or they just are surviving through the circumstances? Rudolf, <laughs> um, I, I mean, we, we, our, our point was exactly that, that uh, uh, politicians, architects and planners should not be left alone doing this. And uh, the community has to be not just engaged, but it really will have to, to some extent, take over. Um, I think throughout the presentation, it was, we always switched a bit between this idea of, uh, between, uh, this idea of uh, the centralized decision making. We saw some examples in Switzerland that were initiated on a central level, mm -hmm. like on a, or an upper level, let's say, because Switzerland is not really central, centralized. Uh, and uh, were then, yeah, uh, continued on a local level or, or um, working on a local level. So it's always important, let's say, from the from the top level to create the framework and circumstances that on the local level people can engage in the end that's uh, the starting point and for sure the people um, uh, that live in this uh, this uh, planned planned landscapes and planned areas uh, they need to have the chance to uh, to have the word into it yeah we, we it's well it's, it's something known and it's something that has to uh, has to be implemented and there are various instruments to do so it's not something uh, unheard of and or not even something new anymore um, um, but it's also something that for example planners themselves and politicians need to learn themselves uh, we always speak of the fact that the community has to learn to engage and has to be engaged but also the planners themselves need to be engaged and have to learn to be engaged because uh, uh, very often they're used to 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 take decisions professionally let's say and not to engage into this kind of um, mutual respectful conversation and dialogue yes maybe to, to, just to maybe clarify the role in, in the switzerland is so all these, these programs which are which i mentioned they are really stimulating programs and um, uh, especially the one with uh, and really um, um quite successful um on issues um uh, somehow it's it's also a bit like a trojan horse eh? the, the stimulating that especially the agglomeration 
thing that I, our collaboration programs and then for 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 many years or even decades so um, this uh, the core cities and uh, and the communities and municipalities around they were uh, strong concurrences there was no cooperation between them also in Switzerland, given to that that um, um, a taxes, so each each um, municipality uh, defines the taxes. So it was really uh, for, for the seller high, high. Uh, and uh, with this um, agglomeration program, with the stimulation, if you work together, if you define a common vision for the settlement and area for your area, where, where to grow and not to grow, and where not to grow, and then we help you with the financing of infrastructures people can bring together and then it's uh, again then starts bottom up so um so we have we see some some fruits <laughs> they are quite high hanging not so so it's in the question also it's a couple yeah and then also here it's it's the it's the issue then how it works it's the issue of competition so not everyone gets it but only the best the best who do bring up the best projects and the best approach according to the to the aims of the state policies which we have and so this can this can bring together yeah, the communities and to elaborate the things from well, more bottom bottom up mm -hmm. yes do we have um teams so these were all the questions that we have, so we yeah. are um, really glad you see also uh, with the question, it's a, it's a big challenge <laughs> um, uh, to, to, to bring people together, to develop spaces together. So it was very, very good, <laughs> very good question. Um, and we are highly curious how it will um, be in our case in the area of uh, Dolina in Western Western Ukraine, um, yeah, looking very looking forward on our program start of our first workshops of the spaces program. Um, Rudolf, you have some questions where, where, where you would like to where, add where, to the discussion. I, I, I'll, I'll ask you later. We will ask us later, yes. Yes, so then I would say that's it for today with Connection Talk. Um, thank you, everyone who was with us. Um, thank you for the questions and a big thanks for and looking forward for the participants for the start um, yeah, of, of our programs. And um, I would finish again with the announcement that um, on next Thursday, there will be the next talk in the framework of spatial program um, from given by Vadim and Sasha, Vadim Denisenko and Sasha Sheglov about GIS and mobility planning in amalgamated Gramata. Thank you all Thank and you. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you.